In a previous video, we saw how to add Firebase authentication to our Android application, and with that we used email authentication. In this video, we're going to add to that prior demonstration, we're simply going to add a new authentication provider, which is Google Authentication. If you haven't seen that previous video, I recommend watching it before this, just so you understand the framework of how Firebase authentication works. So what do we need to do? First of all, enable Google Authentication in the Firebase console. Next, generate an SHA-1 key, which we'll need to add to our Firebase console's settings. We'll do this for debug in this video. Remember to do it for your release key store as well. In other words, the key store that you use when you actually generate an APK or an AAB and deploy it on the Play Store. Finally, we need to go into our code and add Google as an authentication provider. So let's do each of these one at a time. First of all, for authentication, I click and we see users who are already signed in. Now I'm going to go to sign in method and I'm going to choose Google and we see that this is enabled. Now, a couple of things here is that it gives us some instructions that we need to add this SHA-1 fingerprint to our project settings. So we need to generate that. It's helpful first to know where our JDK is installed. So if I go to, I happen to have mine on CJDK 1.80, yours might be different. Let me navigate to the bin directory and we'll see down here there's something called key tool exe that's the tool that allows us to generate this sha1 fingerprint so i'm going to go up to the address bar and type in cmd to get a command line and i, I happen to be in the cjdk directory now because that's what happens when i type cmd into the address bar it opens up a command window to that prompt but it doesn't matter i could pretend i'm in any directory what I need to do is I'm going to say C colon backslash, of course, on a Windows computer I happen to be on, uh, JDK 1.8.0 slash bin slash key tool, which is that file I just showed you. Uh, of course, be careful here. One little typo can mess this whole thing up. So be very careful. Make sure you're typing that path uh, exactly as we see it here. Now, dash export cert dash list dash V. What I've typed so far is going to be the same if you're doing it for a debug key store or for the release key store. Either one's going to be the same. Now, dash alias. For debug, it's going to be Android debug key. For a release or an actual key store, just pay attention to the alias that you give your uh, key store when you're making it. When you may, it, it generally prompts you when you're making an, uh, an APK or an AAB. It will prompt you for all this information. Just remember what alias you gave it because that's what you want to plug in here. Again, for debug, it's going to be Android debug key as we see here. Dash key store. In our case, I'm going to use the debug key store, which is stored on my computer at user profile. So that is an environment variable. Uh, dot android slash dot android slash debug dot key store. That's fairly common. Yours is probably in the same place. Now, once again, this is for debug. When you're creating a production APK or AAB, you will need to have a key store located somewhere. Remember where you put it and just put that path here. That's what you use for production. Word to the wise, make many copies of that, secure them somewhere. If you happen to lose that key store, uh, you can't redeploy uh, or you can't deploy an updated version of your app. That key store is something that should be protected, uh, secured, uh, but also make some backup copies just in case you happen to lose your computer. So anyway, I choose enter. It asks me for a password. Uh, for debug, it's going to be Android. For production use, it's going to be whatever password you associated with your uh, alias uh, alias or key store, I don't recall off, off the hand, but uh, it's going to be one of the passwords that you specified when you generate this production key store. Now take a look at this SHA-1. What we're going to do is highlight it and choose enter, and that essentially copies it into the clipboard. Back on our Firebase console, let's go to settings and choose project settings. Scroll to the bottom of this page, and you'll see something called add fingerprint. Click on that. Put the cursor inside, hold Control, press V. Make sure you did that trick where you highlight and press Enter to put it into the clipboard in the first place. Because here you press Control V and notice it recognizes it as an SHA-1 and then we choose Save. We're almost ready to implement this, but first I wanna show a few troubleshooting tips because if you miss any one of these steps, 
it will give you an error 12500, which is really hard to debug. So first of all, I had chosen enable on this prior to starting the video when I was just rehearsing it a little bit. Make sure that you choose enable and save. And that's the tricky part is you have to remember to save. So make sure that's enabled, make sure that says save. Also make sure that you've selected a project support email. And of course, make sure that you've put in an SHA-1 fingerprint uh, as part of your application. So I can click to project overview and actually I can go right to project settings here and I can validate, yes, I have the support email and I can also validate my SHA-1 key. Let's go ahead and implement. One thing we're going to want to do is update our Google services JSON. So download that, navigate back to Android Studio and go to project and you'll notice you'll have your application and then an app directory. Then you'll have the old Google services JSON here. So simply grab the new one that you just downloaded, choose copy then select on this directory and choose paste. That's good, and choose overwrite. If you're curious what's different, I was as well, so I did a diff between the old Google services JSON and the new Google services JSON, and it adds this OAuth client information right here. Now from here, the code changes are actually quite straightforward. In a previous video, we created authentication based on email address. So we, we created this logon function that gets called when the user clicks the logon button. And we added this Auth UI email builder as our login provider. And you might remember that I mentioned that we need to pass an array of providers when we're requesting authorization. And at that time, we only had one provider, but we still had to add it to an array. Okay, now that we've configured Google authentication in the Firebase console, to enable it in our application, we simply add another item to this array. We follow the same template above with AuthUI, then IDP config, and then we construct a Google Builder, and then we invoke build. And that's it. Let's go ahead and run the application and see what it looks like. Our application's loaded, now I'm going to click the sign in button, and you'll notice a difference between now and the last time we came here. Last time we came here, it went straight into email authentication because that's the only authentication that we had provided. You notice now it has email and Google. And as we go through and enable other of these OAuth providers, we'll get other options here on this first screen. Let's go ahead and choose sign in with Google. Now I've already signed into this account, if it's on uh, this device rather, if it's your first time signing into the device it will take you through a, a whole series of questions on do you want to enable access, so on and so forth. But because I've already signed in it just says okay, I know which user is on this device and it returns very quickly and it gives me my account back again. So let me choose F8. And let's confirm that we have a populated user. And sure enough, we don't know what all these things mean just yet, but sure enough, we have received back an authenticated user and that user was authenticated with Google. Now at this point, we've given the user two different ways to sign in, either email or Google, and we know there are several others that we can try. Let's go back and fix something that's kind of like a technical debt thing that maybe is making us itch a little bit. Remember on rules, we said, okay, for 30 days, we're just going to open it up to everybody. Now that we're requiring logon, let's change the rule to require that the user is authorized. So right now it just has a date in there and it says give all access prior to this date. Let's keep the if here. But what we're going to do is say request.auth.uid, so we have a user ID, is not equal to null. And that effectively says the user has to be authenticated if the user wants to read to or write from this database. So I choose publish. Let's go back to data and see what we currently have. I, I cleaned up this database between videos a little bit. So right now I only have one document in there and it's an Eastern Redbud, but you notice one document with a unique ID. Let's confirm now that we can save now that we're authenticated. So plant name, let's say Southern. We'll choose Southern Magnolia and we'll say a beautiful shade tree and date planted. We'll say, just make up a date here. Then we'll choose, uh, choose save. And you notice when I choose save, if you saw in the background here, very quickly it updated here in Firebase and sure enough it gave me, uh, let's say it looks like it put our new record up on top here, but sure enough it gave me Southern Magnolia, a beautiful shade tree. Fourth thing, let's go to authentication. And when we take a look at authentication, we'll see two different records here. The email authentication I did a little bit earlier and now the Google authentication I did in this video. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.